Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jen, if you are new here. In today's video, I am sharing a bake, craft, and decorate with me. So I'm really excited to share it with you. Today I am baking sugar cookies, rolled out sugar cookies with cookie cutters. I am making them for my niece's first birthday party, which is lemonade themed. So I'm really excited to do this for her. The recipe I'm using is from the sprinklefactory.com. I think this is the third or fourth time that I've used this recipe and it's turned out pretty good each time. I will leave the link to the recipe down below if you'd like to try it for yourself. Um, but the recipe called for two sticks of unsalted butter, cool, and that's what you saw me do at the beginning was cut it into chunks since it was cooler cold butter. And then I put that in there. It's one and a half cup of powdered sugar, one large egg, two teaspoons of vanilla, three cups of all-purpose flour, and one teaspoon of baking powder. I let that get mixed and incorporated very good to form my dough. And I'm using my KitchenAid stand mixer and I absolutely love this thing. Once it is all mixed, I put my silicone baking mat out and then I scrape and plop the dough out onto the mat. And you let it rest for five or 10 minutes, kind of let those glutens rest a little bit. And while I let that rest, I went ahead and washed my bowl up because I was gonna do um, another um, batch you know, of the recipe. And I, once I let it rest for five or 10 minutes, then I needed it for a few minutes just to kind of get any air pockets out. And so it's really smooth dough. And then I started rolling it out. I started to add a little bit of flour to the dough and my rolling pin because I noticed it was starting to stick just a little bit and that's just a little trick that you can do if you start having that issue. Um, and then I start using my cookie cutters and cutting them out. Now with this recipe, it recommends to cut them out directly on the parchment paper or silicone mat that you're going to be baking it on. Um, so you don't misshape the cookie as you peel it up to put it on the baking sheet. Um, and so once I cut all them out, then I start removing the dough. Now with this first batch, it was kind of sticking a little bit to the mat. So I probably should have put a little bit more flour to it. Um, but I ended up getting it all off and all the rest of the batches after this one was so much smoother. Now I do want to add that this recipe is not as sweet as some other sugar cookie recipes. It's more of like a sugar cookie shortbread cookie that's intended to have icing put on it to add the sweetness to it. Oh, here you are, face to face in this trashy bar. Another glass and I am going places, makes me laugh about the irony of everything. I like the way you think and I don't really care about the music on the dance floor. So now that I have finished getting all of that out, um, I'm going to go ahead and put it on my baking sheet and put it in the oven. And with, for these, I baked them probably around eight minutes. And I set my timer on that because I didn't want to forget it because I'm going to go ahead and start rolling out the next batch to go into the oven. And now this is just a quick time lapse of them baking. And then you can also see in the reflection that I'm rolling out the next batch to go in the oven and cutting those. And as you can tell from them baking, they really don't spread much. And that's the key that you want when you do a cutout cookie that you're gonna be decorating and using cookie cutters with. You don't want them to spread too much. You want them to keep their shape. That is my second patch that's going into the oven now. And I just let them cool on the baking sheet and then I transfer them to a cooling rack. And a little tip for if you are baking cookies that are cut out with the cookie cutters, as you can tell on some of these from my first batch, they have a little bit of the cookie kind of on the side of them. Once they're cooled, those little bits on the edge, you can just rub off and then it just makes a nice clean cookie edge for your decorating. 
And here we are, that's my second batch that's out. And then here are the rest of the cookies that I made that doubled the batch of the recipe. And now that, I don't know what it is, but it's always the last batch that goes into the oven that you start cleaning up, doing other things that they get just way too done. Um, but the rest of them turned out really good. When you're next to me. So when you make rolled out sugar cookies to decorate, you usually want to let them rest for a day before you put the icing on and decorate them. And that's what I did. And this is the completed project of icing the cookies. Um, when I was finished with them the next day, I did royal icing and I did not record any of that process because it was kind of off and on throughout the whole next day of mixing the icing and decorating them. And it's kind of time consuming. Um, and I got into a rush. So this is how they turned out. I thought they were so cute. It is lemonade theme and she's turning one. So we did the ones with her name and the number one. Um, and then we did some pink and yellow lemons and I just thought they turned out so cute. And then the whole lemons that have the leaves on it. I just, they were so adorable and they were so cute at her birthday party. So if you're interested in any of my baking items that I use, my cookie sheets, anything like that, I will have my Amazon favorites listed down below and some of them are in there if you wanna check it out. Next, I am moving on to a little craft project. I was wanting to make a little wood plank sign to put on a gallery wall that I've been working on. Um, so I have just a one by four board that I have painted white and then I cut out a stencil on my silhouette and I'm putting that on here and then I am going to put some paint on this and I just use a little dabbing technique with just little rectangle, I mean um, triangle makeup sponges and you'll see me do that and then you will see the finished product. Never up, never down, never. Like a theme in a song, clever. Feeling high, feeling low at the same time. Feel so right, then I'm wrong, hoping I'll be fine. But I get up. And I am using just basic acrylic paint from my craft store and I'm using black and then this green, I didn't have a green the color that I wanted so I ended up mixing quite a few different colors of paint that I had to get this green so I cannot tell you what color that even is um, but I just mixed around to get a color that I liked. I think I put about three coats of the paint on here to get a nice good coverage so it would show up really good and look good. Now I am peeling off the stencil, which is satisfying, and then you start to see the final project. And then I just use craft, uh, craft tweezers to peel out the stencil that are inside of the letters. And here's the final project. I thought it turned out really cute and it's gonna go well with what I'm putting it in. And I just made this stencil um, myself. I designed it in my Silhouette software, so. So next I am working on hanging a gallery wall and this is just a sketch that I did when I first started designing this whole thing. I had one thing that was my inspiration and then I just kind of went from there and did some shopping quite a bit at Hobby Lobby is where most of the stuff came from. I'm going to be hanging it with command strips and a couple nails for a couple of the things that you'll see. Um, but yeah, this is how it's going to turn out. Now this is going to be where it changes out uh, certain of the things with the seasons. Now that home sign right there, it's interchangeable with where the O is, where the football is now. And that's kind of what my 
One thing that I started designing from came from is just centered around that little home sign there. Um, I printed the canvases online. There's the little sign that you just saw me made. I also um, put a stained one by twos and then um, put that around it to make a frame and I just thought it turned out really cute. Um, this is going to go on this wall right here and it's angled like that because it's the wall that has the stairs going up. Um, so I just wanted to put something there. Um, up there I have another gallery wall with the Scrabble tiles and I made all of those myself as well. Um, but yeah, it's all going to go on this wall so we are going to go ahead and start getting all of the command strips on the back and getting it ready to hang up. So it's actually a different day that I um, got around to hanging the gallery wall. Um, the day that I baked the cookies and did the little craft project for the sign, um, I had to go run a couple errands for my husband's work and didn't have time to finish completing this. Um, but I'm finally getting around to it and I'm excited. Um, I'm just starting by taking off the like little sawtooth hanging hooks that you can hang things with nails and any other kind of things that would prevent it from laying flat on the wall. I'm taking all of those off and then I am putting the command strips on. My whole thought for this wall is to change it out seasonally and I like to decorate and change things for the seasons. Um, but the home sign that I showed you, there are different um, wooden pieces that change out for different seasons. Right now, I have it set up for fall and football. Um, I made the hello fall sign, and then we have the football for the O and home. And then uh, you also see the three canvases of the kids' newborn pictures. Um, we are huge Texas Longhorn fans, and so each of the kids, when we did their newborn photos, we did a Texas Longhorn theme picture, and so I got those printed out on 8x8 canvases, and so those are going to be up for the fall time of year, and then come Christmas time, I'll probably start changing it up, maybe do some kind of Christmas time picture of each of the kids. Um, but yeah, I just like the idea of changing it up, and then also with the shelf, I can change that up too putting a little plant or greenery or just whatever I want to on there. Um, I am starting here by hanging it all up. And once I started putting that top one up there, I couldn't get the pressure to push that on so that my husband come over and help a little bit. Um, but yeah, I'm just hanging them up with how I designed them on the paper and had them laid out on the floor.
So here we are with the finished product. I think it turned out really cute. I'm very happy with how it ended up turning out. Um, so here's a view from pulled back. So up on top, I have the eight by 10 frame that has a family photo in it. And that frame came from Hobby Lobby. And then here is the home sign. Now I made this sign at a local um, workshop where you can go and paint signs and everything. And then it's just a magnet for the shape for the season to be put off and on. And then next are the canvases that I printed. Um, I ordered them online of each of the kids. And then this is a cotton wreath that I put up here for fall and that came from Hobby Lobby. That little shelf came from Hobby Lobby and I've had that plant, but I think I got the plant from TJ Maxx at some point, but I liked that up there. That little collage frame came from Hobby Lobby. And I really like the colors of that. It just kind of incorporated all the colors in the gallery wall. Um, but I do need to get some four by six pictures printed for that. There's another canvas. And here is the hello fall sign that I made. Now I will make more signs or buy one if I find one that'll fit to change that up for the seasons. There is another canvas. And then last we have this little cathedral style mirror that I got from Hobby Lobby. I thought that was just the perfect little something to put along with it. I just wanna thank you for watching this video and baking and decorating with me. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up. It really helps me out. And if you are new and if you'd like to stick around, click that subscribe button and I will see you guys soon. Thanks for watching.